Today on Singles Court. I'm listening. I'm a good listener. So what happened was... <laughs> Howard's copping a plea for mercy since Debbie busted him for breaking the rules. But she so steps what, out of the police were you, car. Were you in the back of the police she gives car me a ticket. No, I'm a cop. <laughs> she gave me a ticket. He was I wasn't, speeding. I was he not was speeding. speeding. And Alex says it's all in the family. She's a little bit embarrassed about about what her friends think about the fact that I'm living with my mother. But Donna thinks he's keeping mom on what's really going on. Why can't she help you take care of your mother? Uh, she doesn't want somebody in the house traipsing around. Well, hello there, and welcome to Singles Court, the number one show on the Singles Broadcast Network. But that has nothing to do with me, Michael Day, the show's producer, but it has everything to do with the host, with the most, relationship mediator, Angela Siegel. Hi, Michael. How are you doing today? I am wonderful. I just had a double latte, and I am ready to go. I can see that. You know, I just did some rewrites for some clients on personal ads. Mm -hmm. I really put them in a good light. Great. Sounds like I ought to get started on yours as well. They're going to get lots of calls. Well, oh, yeah. you need to help me. I need a lot of help. <laughs> you do. But today's <laughs> episode is not about me and my problems. It's about Howard and Debbie. Now, Howard is a factory worker, and Debbie's occupation we'll discuss in a moment. I'll let them explain it. And this is what Howard has a problem with. He feels that Debbie has withheld certain information about what she does. And I call this the case of I am what I am. Now, deal with it. Hmm. Well, Howard, you seem to have issue with um, some occupational things, I guess, and I assume they're not hazards. So tell me what's going on. No, it's not hazards. No, basically, uh, um, what happened was I met her uh, in a singles club. Her friend, some friends of mine invited me to a singles club, and uh, I didn't want to go there. And I <laughs> met her, and she didn't want to be there either. How do you know and, I didn't want to be there? Uh, no, look, I'm who's telling the story? Can it, don't give me attitude, All please. Right, okay, I just, fine. I'm All talking. Right. Okay. Thank you. All right. So what You're happened was club. we met at the singles club, and we decided to start dating after that. So we decided to meet we at a decided. restaurant later on. Yes, we decided. And yeah. then we spent about a week uh, going to the restaurants and stuff like that. And just meeting very casually. I paid. And we st I paid. Look, it, I, it wouldn't I matter paid. to me who just paid, so you know. okay? Just so you Even paid. if you just paid the so whole thing, I paid, we split okay? the bill. I, paid. I know you did. It's not about that, okay? It's not about that. Well, I don't want so her what thinking we that I'm some, you know. Was, during our, our dates or whatever at the restaurant, I would talk about stuff. I would talk about my life and, and you know, about my work he and talked. stuff. Because I work in a factory, right? I work in a factory of a, a furniture manufacturer. It's a really nice job. One of the problems I'd have before is that women would sometimes, like, you know, I'd say, I work in a factory, and they'd go, well, I'm not going to be with a guy who's going to get did a I do car. That? Or did I do that? No, well, I, I know you didn't do that, that but oh, wait a second. Wait, no, let's get to what you did do. Let's get to what you did do. So what happened was, what happened? Okay. Can I finish, my? Well, it depends. If you need to like get going here. I know. Well, I'm just I'm getting to it. Okay, I'm getting okay. to it. So what well, happened you know, was? Well, you know, I like the credit not to be rolling. When uh, well, okay, okay, thank you. Okay, but I'm getting to it. So what happened was? <laughs> so what happened was? Okay, I tell her about my work. She doesn't tell me about her work, okay? I'm asking wait her questions. Wait a minute, just I'm because... No, wait a second, just wait, I'm just not you finished tell yet. Me about I'm not finished yet. Know, yeah, just just open open because I, I was open, I was honest with you, you and I was totally you. telling you exactly everything about my life. Don't make I want you come to over there, factory boy. <laughs> Thank you. Debbie, let me ask you, oh, because so he's going on and on, okay? Mm -hmm. So you all met, mm -hmm. you somewhat liked each other, you obviously had issue with the fact that you were paying for everything, or no, your, no, or no, your part. I didn't care. It didn't but, mean but you care now, you didn't care then. Well, yeah, now. Okay, oh, now you, know, you wait, all of a sudden could how start How would you let the lady talk? You know what, I'm telling you. You talk too much. Right, that's your I'm problem. telling you, I'm telling you. That door is going to see one little black lady walk through it, and it's going to be me, so you better chill, okay? Just give me a second. So. Let's get to the point where you all are having a conversation. Mm -hmm. He's telling you, you're, uh, you about what he does for a living. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? I'm listening. I'm a good listener. Okay, so you're pretty much not participating in that part of the conversation. Well, I'm telling some things about myself, but <laughs> okay. yeah, I'm, I'm listening. He's, like he's talking. 
Okay. Wound, like what? Okay, so you all are having a conversation like at this point. What? Now, Howard, pick up the story from that point, not from the wound. Okay, okay. from all that right. point. So what I'm saying is, I'm asking her about her work, okay? We're dating and stuff. I'm, I'm asking her about stuff. I'm telling her about her, my life. I'm telling her about, like, you know, my college. Week. About, like, you know, funny stories about me and my pals. Okay. You know, smoking weed tell us some of the funny and, stories. And tell us some of the funny I, stories. No, I can't tell them tell now, her. can tell I? Her. I'll I'll tell her. I also, about the I introduced her to my family. Oh. I introduced her to my friends, okay? I introduced her to my family. Okay, but my I, mom's really I'm sick. Missing something. Okay? I and I introduced Howard. her to my mom. Howard. At a, yeah. Howard. Help me to understand the part mm -hmm. you're mad about. You're going through this big, long speech about what you've told her. We, I, we get the gist of that. I'm telling her now about tell my life, me. and she's not saying anything about her life, okay? okay? So that's I'm what asking I'm her questions about her job, <laughs> oh. and then all of a sudden I'm getting nothing. Listen, listen. I'm telling all I my pay, friends about I her. I pay my rent. It's not about I own my what, car. What, whether you pay the I rent. I paid for dinner. I, I paid for look, dinner. I could Daddy, pay for dinner. Not pay for dinner. I Daddy, paid for dinner. This is the part where, you know what? I really wish there were a hole in the bottom of that stand. Because then I push the button right here. Uh, yeah, let me it's tell him. you. It's I, him. I, I, it's, I, it's, him. Him. it's him. It's him. It's him. It's both him. him. She is not being honest. Excuse okay. me, okay, Debbie. Okay, okay, let me tell you how the show usually goes Thank here, you. okay? You offer the information, then Angela asks a question. You stop and listen to her, and then she helps you sort things out. Thank you, Michael. Right. Now, Howard, yes. I need to hear from you. Okay, you're the okay. one that came here and okay. said you were having a problem. Yes. Now let me tell you specifically what I need to hear uh -huh. because you're going on and on and on. You're scaring me. Mm. Okay, I need to know what it is that you're so upset about with respect to okay. what she does for a living. You want to know? Okay. Yeah. Right. I'm yes, with my pals. I do. Okay, I'm, I'm with my buddies. We're going to see a game. We're going to see a baseball game, right? Okay. We're driving back from the game. I'm with Matt, I'm with Pete, and I'm with Jay, three of my very good friends. We're driving back, and all of a sudden this light goes off, right? There's a cop, pulls us over, right? I'm doing the speed limit. Cop pulls us over. I'm sitting there pulling out my, my, my license and stuff. And my buddy Jay turns to me and says, Hey, man, psst, that's your girlfriend, man. Like she so steps what, out of the police were car. You, were you in the back of the police car? She gives car me a arrested? ticket. No, I'm a cop. Oh. <laughs> she gave me a ticket. He was I wasn't, speeding. I was not he was speeding. speeding. I was in the. You were and not only speeding. that, she pulls me out of the car in front of all my friends I did not pull you and out ridicules of the car. me. I did not pull you, you out, out of the car. You pulled me out of the car. Debbie, pull you out of the car. You feel like an idiot. I didn't Debbie. pull him out of the car. Debbie. We stepped out on the curb. Okay. I don't care about that, okay? Here's my question, because this is relationship. This is like singles court. It's about relationships. It's not, I don't care there about the other no stuff. There is no relationship here. It, my uh, question is, when did he find out that you were a police officer? That night. So <clears throat> up until that point, you found no need at all to tell him what you did for a living? Well, I didn't see it. There was any reason I to tell him you. what I did for a living. Why not? Well, number one, I mean, when we were talking, okay, wait. When we were talking no, about, wait no, wait, you, no, you wait. You know what? The ejector button is sounding real good right now. All right, I'm yeah. sorry. You know, if I'm you're sorry, not, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If you were at work and I just did what you did to me, you'd have me in handcuffs. So I suggest you listen to at least the question, okay? okay? The question is, at what point did you think it was not necessary to tell him what you do the majority of the day, which is work? Okay. When we first started going out, when we started talking about this relationship thing and, and, and getting more intimate and whatever, he did, in the first week that we were together, ask me what I did for a living. And, and you I basically, told him? I told him that, hey, I pay my own rent, I pay my own way, you know, everything's cool, I don't do anything illegal, doesn't matter. Let's just be happy. You know, would you accept that answer from somebody else? I don't know, maybe. No, you would not. So you know what, you, you really need to look at what you're saying. Mm -hmm. look. Howard, now you found out what she does for a living. Yeah. How do you feel about it? Well, I want an apology. I want her to be honest with apology. me. I can't, I've told apology. all my friends. I've told everybody what is it in my she, family. What is it she That's would your be apologizing? Your mouth is too big. Uh, you're telling all your friends about big. all my business. I am your not, mouth is I just too want big. to be able to be big. honest about you uh, his with mouth my is friends big. in my relationship Howard. with the woman that I love. Howard, Howard, Angela, remember me? This is, I'm the one that asked the questions. Now you know what she does for a living. Mm -hmm. You say you want an apology, but help us understand what it is you want an apology for. For being, for lying, and for not being not honest lie. with me. I was for honest. Uh, for making me look like an idiot in front of my friends. For giving me a ticket. His friends, it's always and about also, his friends. You know what? This I got is about? a ticket from somebody who I'm sorry, but you know, cut me some slack, you right? We're dating. You know what? I've heard enough. Right. That's it. I'll be back with my resolution. Call the police. I will. Debbie, help me understand, why didn't you tell him you were a cop? Because I have had previous relationships where as soon as I, they find out I'm a cop, stuff happens. I mean, they, I, I get the name calling, oh, she must be a lesbian or something like that, or who wears the pants in this relationship, or, or they just run. Okay. My resolution. 
Howard, obviously you're upset to find out she's a, a cop, and I can understand that, and you're disappointed. I understand that as well. However, you have to take responsibility for the fact that you should be a little more insistent on what it is that someone does for a living. It is a big part of their life. So you had an opportunity to make sure she told you that information. And if she didn't, then you need to run. And you didn't do that. Debbie, you on the other hand, I mean, you have issues. You're bitter, antagonistic, angry. It's not being a cop that destroys your relationship. It's the fact that you have your, an attitude like, I dare you to love me. Just try and love me. You just are so bitter and so pissed off that no one has a chance to love you because you start out from the very beginning. You know, relationships are about business. It's intertwined within the relationship. So if you think about it, you look at this relationship, this relationship was murdered. The very life was choked out of it. It was assault with a deadly weapon. And that deadly weapon was your bad attitude, your big mouth, and your tongue. So that's that in black and white. Next on Singles Court, Alex says it's all in the family. I happen to live with my mom, but you know my conditions, my, my circumstances are a bit unusual. But Donna thinks he's keeping mom on what's really going on. Why can't she help you take care of your mother? She doesn't want somebody in the house. And Singles Court is back on the Singles Broadcast Network. And we've restored the order somewhat. Thank goodness. Those two? Yeah, 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 yeah. <sighs> okay, but we have a new couple in our studio, and they are Alex and Donna. And they are both in marketing. And as a coincidence, they met at the market. Now, they met at a convention a few months ago, and they really hit it off. In fact, they fell in love. And uh, Alex's problem is he still lives at home. Now, Donna wants him to leave the nest and join her in the love nest, but Alex is a little hesitant. So I call this the case of mama's boy or mama's toy. Hmm. Well, Donna, it sounds like you have issues that he's living under the bosom of his mother. So what's the problem? Well, there wasn't a problem at first. I mean, everything has been going really, really well. And uh, we uh, fell in love in New York City at this convention and just uh, enjoyed each other's company. But when we got back home, uh, things started to get a little weird. My friends kind of felt it was weird that he was... Okay, but he's, he, all, he lived with his mother when you met him. You knew that. Yeah. Ever since the, from the start, she's known that I lived with my mom. So okay, so when did it become a really problem? shouldn't really come as any surprise to her. Uh, it started to become a problem when... <clears throat> <clears throat> the problem was, is we were hanging out with some oh, of her You know what, are you friends. a ventriloquist? No. Because I asked you a question, for some reason it came out of your mouth. Well, I'm just, she doesn't seem to want to tell you what the problem is. Okay, the problem well, is, is that she's, she's a little bit embarrassed about, about what her friends think about the fact that I'm living with my mother. I know that she thinks it's unusual. What do you, you think? Know? Well, I think it's fine. I mean, I'm, I know that you're supposed to uh, leave home by the time you're in your 20s. I happen to live with my mom, but, you know, my conditions, my, my circumstances are a bit unusual. What anyway, she's think? always embarrassed that her friends think that it's unusual and look down on it. So okay, what would your circumstances be? Because, you know, let's compare you with other people like you. Uh, well, I'm a, I'm a single child, and my dad died three years ago, and ever since then, my mom's experienced depression. As well, lately, she's, uh, the last few years, she's uh, suffered from Alzheimer's as well as shown symptoms of uh, arthritis. So you're there to take care I'm of her? I'm there to take care of her. Okay, well, you can see, that, Donna, that's admirable. I mean, everyone says if a man loves his mother, then he'll love you too. And so, by all means, I'm not knocking that. Okay, I, so what's the, what are you knocking? Well, what I'm knocking is that in last month, for example, uh, we were out on ten different occasions, and he was called away to do something for his mother. Ten different occasions? Yeah, ten different occasions. So I you, started were, to keep you were track. counting. Okay. Are you making a I list? Was, I was are you keeping a list? track, and at, I was at 10, counting. Do you blame her? I mean, at ten, ten's a lot. Okay. The last time was the final straw. It was a very close friend of mine's uh, stag and doe. And he didn't show up to the party. What's a stag and doe? It's a big party before a wedding. Thanks. Okay, go ahead. So, uh, you know, these were people that I'd grown up with. It was a really she, important she, day for me, and he couldn't make it. She and experienced a tremendous flare-up of her arthritis. Who's she? Your mother? My mother. Okay. And, and she called me is... in extreme pain. She could not even handle a cup of water. I had to go okay. take care of her, I mean, and I love her. It's not that I don't want to be there for I, her. I, I want to be there for her. I can take care of okay. my mother. But, okay, but here's my question. You understand that he wants to help her, right? Yes. Okay. Now, Alex, help me understand why you won't allow her, the person that you say you love, to help you take care of your mother. Exactly. Uh, okay, I'm not sure what you're saying. Well, okay, here, but look at me, and I'll tell you. 
It's a question. Okay. Why can't she help you take care of your mother? Okay, my mom is very proud, all right? And uh, she doesn't want somebody in the house traipsing around that she doesn't know, okay, that uh, while she's like, she can't, I have to bathe her, well, I have Alex, to feed her, I have, to hold, I have to take a spoon and actually serve it to her okay, mouth sometimes Alex. when her flare-ups are really... Oh no, I could help you. Alex. That's what I'm talking no, about. No, I know, but it's not about you. It's a, sorry. <laughs> okay, when I ask the question, the best way to get a resolution is for you to give me an answer. Okay. Now the question was why she couldn't she My could mom's not help very you. proud. Okay. And she doesn't want somebody around the house. Okay, so your mother okay. with Alzheimer's who doesn't really know who's who. She, she doesn't she hasn't met her. I've told her about her and I've told her that she's really you know, a great woman and my mom's very happy that I've met somebody that I love. Okay. It's well just... let's go back to the question. Why can't she help you with your mother? Now you told me she's proud, but a proud person with Alzheimer's, it seems to me as though you can still slip somebody in, in there. So See, I think that she doesn't want any, a new woman coming mm. into her life, especially when she has her son at, a, at her she's beck and call. She's experiencing major depression as well, right? Okay. For, for, it's like a nest, you know? You don't bring somebody into the nest that's never been there before, unless you but want her there. She doesn't know her. It's my, it's my relationship. But we're in love. I, I know. I don't I, 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 know. That. I just know don't what? want to have to infringe that on my you mom. You know what? I tell you what. She, she doesn't understand because she's. Listen. Yeah, at some point, she's going to have to know who she is. So let's call her. Let's call her now. I have the number. At least this well, way by phone. I know, but she, I think she actually has a, an appointment today. Sometimes she goes to a special oh, clinic. Oh, well. I hope she has a cell phone. It's ring. Hello? Noreen? Hi. Yeah. Hold Hi. on one sec. Noreen? Hello. Hi. Hi. This, hi, this is Angela Siegel calling you from Singles Court. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing fine. Great. Yeah. Well, you know, you sound really well. Oh, I feel great. I just got back from playing tennis. I play every day. You oh. know, I'm doing really well. Yeah. Really? Well, I'm, yeah. Here, I'm here with your son, Alex, and his girlfriend, Donna, and we're just so, trying to, make, to find out why you all have not son. met yet. Oof. I don't have a son named Alex. I have a boyfriend named Alex. So, wait a minute. Who? Who's, who's he there with? Who, who, what's going on? What's the son stuff? Wait a minute, and who's this girlfriend? Some slut? Oh. How long have you been seeing okay, her, you it's, jerk? Can I, can I explain, please? Can, you can I explain, you please? Can just go to hell, you I love you, okay? I love you. Even I do. touch I do. me. Can, can I, I even touch me? Can I explain this, please? Okay. Whoa. Okay, this when I was... be a good story, I think. When I was... Okay, just remember... Don't... Even. Remember New York. When I was young, okay, I was very awkward around women. I was v my. When would this have been? A when year I was ago? in high school and university, and I couldn't, I could not even talk with women. I, I couldn't, I could not enjoy myself, let alone enjoy women. That and what, and what happened was, is that suffered. I suffered for it in bed. Okay, I was not unable to perform, right? I met Noreen. You? And she, she brought the man out of me. She made me able, like, to appreciate woman? a woman and to be able to please her. And. Y you're benefiting from it because how is okay, I was not able to. <laughs> how is she benefiting uh, from you having a relationship? Because I was not able disgusting. to function before. I was, and now you can. I was incompetent you've, you've as, seen the light, as a lover. And the red now light I'm, district? Well, yeah, don't, no, I don't think he's seen the light just yet. Uh, how do you I feel could, about this? He, he's got a girlfriend. That's not his mother, it's his girlfriend. How do you feel about this? It was, I, was I'm, very, I don't know what to, I, I don't know how to feel. I'm a little in shock actually, and I kind of feel stupid. But I guess I can I love credit you. that to you. I do what? love you. I do oh, love you. I do. Don't even, don't, let me explain. Donna, I'll explain this. Please, Donna, the more you're Donna. No, put your hand down. School's over. I have a question for you. Now you know that he's got. A, he has a relationship with another woman, older woman. How does that make you feel? What are you? What are you going to do? I'm going to kick his butt. I was going to end it. Well, I was going to end it, but I, I just want to do it slowly. I don't I think just, you're going to have to. I think you're there. I'll be back with my resolution. Well, the other woman, my mother, please. Donna, I hope you see the writing on the wall. It's loud and clear. It reads, two-timing liar. All I can say to you is there's not a relationship in the world that is worth inciting violence. And as far as kicking his butt, he's not even worth it. Keep your feet on the ground. Alex, I mean, let's think about this. There's never a time when having a relationship with two women is for the benefit of either woman. It's for your benefit. And there's no way in the world you're going to convince me that that was in her best interest. And I hope that you're not stupid enough to try and convince yourself of that either. It was very immature, and it was an obvious, just total disrespect to the relationship. You know, relationships on both parts 
have to be, have a mutual respect. And in this case, Alex chose to totally disregard the feelings of not only you, but Noreen as well. You have to think about this and say overall, what has happened here? Well, what's happened is Alex has dug himself a deep hole, jumped in it, and I say the best thing to do is just throw dirt on it, keep throwing dirt on it. You don't even deserve a burial. You really don't. But if you must have a marker, let's think what the epitaph should say. It should probably say something like this. Here I lie because I lied and lied and lied. So lay there and rest in peace, along with the relationship. And that's that in black and white. Well, there it is. When it comes to relationships, going undercover, well, it might handcuff your lover. And not in the good way. You, never mind. And you can't have your cake and have your mother cut it up into little pieces for you and eat it too. It just doesn't work. So join us next time here at Singles Court. The final word for singles. <laughs>